meeting. Uh, this is part of our best practices webinar series that we do every other week. Uh, we started this back in August. Um, so it's open to the entire BMC community, both customers, partners, uh, internal, external, and we have a rotating list of topics covering the entire portfolio. Uh, there is a uh, calendar on BMC communities where we track uh, the upcoming topics and sessions as well as have the event listings, presentations, and recordings from the previous sessions. Uh, this session is being recorded, so if that's an issue for you, then uh, you'll go ahead and drop off now. But I think for those of you who need to drop early, you'll be able to access this. I'll be sending, sending out the link um, to the community's event after the uh, recording, or sorry, after the event, and then you can link to the recording from there. All right, with that, uh, I'm going to turn it over to your presenter today, who is Thad White. Uh, Thad is a veteran seasoned true set operations management expert here at BMC, and today he's going to talk about smart reporting. Thank you, Seth, very much, and thanks everyone for taking the time uh, to learn about this topic. Uh, TrueSight Smart Reporting is BM was selected for BMC's next generation reporting platform, and I have a lot of material to cover today in a very short amount of time, and I want to spend uh, most of the time in demonstration. <laughs> so let's try and get through the next uh, three slides in about five minutes or so, and, and we can dive right into the product. So what is TrueSight Smart Reporting? As I said, it uh, was selected as our next generation platform for a reporting engine, uh, a reporting server, to replace uh, the older TrueSight Reporting, which was based on business objects. So what that means is you have a new report front end. Uh, it is now based on a reporting platform called Yellowfin. And if you're familiar with our Remedy platform, they also have something called Remedy Smart Reporting, <clears throat> and it is also based on the yellow fin platform. So we selected it for a few reasons, uh, the main one being that it does appear to be much easier to generate or create your own custom reports with this drag and drop front end. So it is a true enterprise reporting engine. It's got business intelligence. It's got dashboards that are easy to use built in. That's pretty cool. I'll show you some of that. It's drag and drop. Uh, it has all the rest of uh, enterprise reporting engine capabilities such as publish and export and all that kind of thing, drill through reports. <clears throat> so some information that's going to be relevant to you when you begin thinking about implementing this solution uh, is here on this particular slide. Let's start with the picture on the right-hand side so I can kind of po point out the architecture. If you're familiar with TrueSight reporting, the previous generation, the architecture is basically the same. You have three main components. You have the reporting server. Uh, let me get my pen here. You have the re the uh, report server here on uh, the the front end. You have a reporting database that he goes to to to, to grab the data he's reporting on, and then you have the report engine, which is kind of the middleman between the reporting database and the endpoints where it collects data. Okay, so so three main components, uh, and what has been replaced is this component here, TrueSight Smart Reporting over business objects. So it does require you to be at a presentation server 11.3 plus. You can have older TSIM servers, 10.7 plus, to send data. It is much more integrated into the solution uh, than the previous generation. So uh, it has RBAC controls and three levels of, of access. Uh, that you need to be aware of. There's one out-of-the-box report that is provided with the solution, uh, and I'll show you that. In the demo, there's two data views. We'll talk more about that than when the best practices slide, which is next, device and impact, device and events, and CIS and impact. Uh, the up, if you're upgrading from TrueSight reporting, the data is preserved for, during your upgrade, so you're not going to be losing any data if you've if you've been using that uh, previous platform. If you've built reports in business objects, those reports will not migrate, so you'll have to create your recreate your new reports on the new platform. Uh, because it is so tightly integrated, uh, multi-tenancy is supported uh, with the solution. It is licensed for TrueSight data only, so if uh, you go, hey, I got this other database over here, I want to connect to it, the answer is uh, not directly no. Uh, but you could be a little sneaky. You could write a custom KM or use one of our toolkit type KMs and suck that data into TrueSight if it's relevant, and then it becomes TrueSight data. 
Uh, so it's a chargeable item. Uh, it is not, it's not free. If you want to know the, the charge for that, I do not have any idea. Get with your account team and they'll let you know. And I mentioned Remedy service, uh, Smart Reporting earlier. It is not currently compatible with the Remedy Smart Reporting solution. So at this date and time, it would require two separate implementations of Yellowfin if you have Remedy Smart Reporting already. You'll need another one for TrueSight. So some of the best practices. So I've been playing with this thing for a little while now since we uh, since we decided we were going to go with this platform. I, I am not an expert in this platform by any stretch, although I do have quite a bit of time on it. And these are some of the things that I came up with along with uh, the development management team. So number one, size for success, right? There's nothing worse than trying to create a report and it just sits there and grinds away, right? And remember, there's three layers to this thing. Remember the architecture the database, the report engine, and the report server. Make sure all of those are sized correctly, otherwise your reporting project uh, is not going to get off on, on a good foot here. And there's the links to some of the documentation on how to size this thing. This is a big one. Understand the reporting requirements. And reporting requirements are usually pretty general, coming from the, the people that are requesting reports. Sometimes they don't even know what they want. Uh, so you have to, to kind of be ready to ask the relevant questions. So who needs access and what type of access do they need? And this is going to be handled through your authorization profiles at your presentation server layer. This is a big one. What data is needed to satisfy the report requirements? Don't be lazy here. And what I, what I mean by that is uh, if you're familiar with how to configure data collection in the previous solution, and it's the same here, you have to create external attribute reports at the TSIM server for the data that you want. Don't be lazy and just create one external attribute report with all the data in the TSIM server, right? That's, that's not going to be good for anyone for, for several reasons, right? There's scalability concerns. You probably don't need all the data that, that's, that's out there. You don't want to be sending all of that data over. And uh, it's going to make it a little, it's going to make it hard if you go, am I really collecting this data or not? And you're going to have to wade through one report to try and uh, external attribute report to try and figure out if you're actually collecting that data. So organize the attribute reports, and that's kind of up to you how you want to organize them. And when I say organize, name them something relevant. You can organize them by KM. You can organize them by platform, wh whatever it is. Just make, make This is really going to help you in the long run to understand what data and where to look to see if you're collecting the data and when somebody requests a new report that may have a different kind of data than you're already collecting. Same thing goes for event propagation. So the solution naturally reports on performance data that you're collecting as well as events. If you don't really want to report on certain event types, maybe it's a specific event class or a specific severity or whatever it is, don't propagate those events to the database, right? Just kind of, it makes sense. Basic scalability type stuff. Notification scheduling and report size. So. Um, I, I, I hear this all the time uh, from, from different people. Uh, so notifications, right? Do you really need to email a report every day, right? Maybe not. If, if they're users of TrueSight, they don't need to email it. They can just go to the solution and look, right? So that kind of thing. Scheduling. If you have a – and report size can go hand in hand. I, I had a customer one time that, that was trying to run a, a report every day that was over 600 pages long. I don't know about you, but I'm not going to look at a 600-page report every single day, right? So does it really make sense to, to, to create a report that big and email it every day, you know? So, again, sometimes your customers or requesters of reports are their own worst en enemy, and they don't really know what they're asking for. So you got to kind of point them in the right direction. So when you are developing reports with the tool, and I'll show you this in the demo, set fetch limits. Otherwise, uh, because I said it, it is drag and drop. So if you drag over a, a column of, uh, you know, all your devices and you have 100,000 devices, it, it may grind away, right? So set fetch limits when you're, when you're doing that so you don't, uh, you don't just sit there and watch a, a circle on the screen go round and round. <clears throat> When they, when your customers are requesting reports from you, uh, and a lot of times they'll have, I want a report that has this data in this corner and this data here and this data down here, and it's, and you're, you're thinking to yourself, wow, I'm, you know, I'm just kind of getting started with the solution. I don't really know how to do all of this, multiple joins and all that kind of stuff. You know, uh, does it really need to be a single report with all this different data, or can you leverage a dashboard, right, which is single reports? 
that you drag and drop to a single sheet to make create a dashboard out of it. It makes things much easier. I'll show you that. Import and export reports. Uh, we, you do have that capability, uh, and I would like for you guys to leverage that. Uh, so if you have a, uh, a development system, you can create reports there. You can export them, import them in, into your production, good to go. But what I really would like to do is, is if you start creating some really cool reports that would seem useful to others in the community, share them. Uh, you know, just export the report. It's, it's, it doesn't have any of your data in it. Uh, it's just going to have all the fields that any other BMC customer would have, right? So you could export those, share them on communities, and, and we could re-import them in, into our systems. Uh, I will caution you on the import. The export's simple. There's not much to do. Import it has a couple of gotchas uh, in it that you'll have to look out for, and maybe that'll be in a different session. I don't have time to cover that today. Data views, which one to use? So in the previous slide, there was a couple of different data views. Uh, the devices and events, and that's the one you're going to probably mostly use. That's for creating reports on performance data and or event, event data. And then the other one is uh, CIs and events, and you see events in both. But the CI and events, typically if you're going to create reports against uh, like service impact type uh, information. Uh, use summarized data if possible for performance reports. Uh, that's a big one as well. Within the database, we're already summarizing the data for you. We do collect raw data, and you can report on raw, raw data, but you're going to take a performance hit. Uh, but we also summarize that data into hourly, daily, and weekly. So if it's possible, use that summarized data. So let's get uh, jump straight into the demonstration. Let's see how much time I have left. Uh, I spent a little more time than I wanted to, but that's okay. Let's get into the demonstration. Uh, so first thing that you can see is my presentation server, and uh, you can see that under components, TrueSight Smart Reporting is now registered as a component, right? So that's the tight integration and the RSSO and all the rest of that. When you do integrate it, you see that you have this Smart Reporting link at the bottom. So if I select that, I can now launch Smart Reporting. This is the only way to get to Smart Reporting. You cannot link, go directly from a web browser to the Smart Reporting. You can only access it through the TrueSight presentation server, which is why 11.301 is required. So when I open it, you can have a landing page just like most any other uh, solution where, in my case, I've got a, a dashboard. And you see my dashboard has a couple of tabs, environment health uh, and event report. Now, so I'm kind of running some some heavy reports in the background. I mentioned that, you know, will a dashboard work or do you have to build a single report with all different kinds of data on it? So this is a dashboard with each one of these is a separate report that I've created. And I just drag and drop them onto this, this, this guy here. And it can be two rows, three rows. There's lots of different ways that looks and, that you can do with the dashboard on, on how you want to configure stuff here. Okay, Creating a new report. So I had a few requests. Uh, leading up to this this webinar, uh, a couple of different things. One is a drill through report. So a drill through report is um, a high level report that if you click on a certain area, you can get to detail. Okay. Uh, so how do you create one of those? So we're going to walk through that real quick. So when you're designing a report like that, you have to think in, in two levels, and you have to start it at the the detail level first. So you need to create a report on the detailed data that, that you want to see. So if I go over here to this plus sign and say create a report, I'm going to use the, the data view of device metrics and events because I'm going to do a drill through event type report. We get to the to the UI. Now remember I said uh, a best practice is to set your active row limit, right? So uh, I'm not going to do that because this is a development system and, and I don't have a lot of data in here to begin with. But typically you'd set this to you know, 1,000, 2,000, 10,000, depending on how much horsepower you have, so that you would limit your queries when you start dragging things over here. Because this will be my detail page, so I'm going to start dragging a lot of information over here about my events. So under event information, I'm going to drag over the event host. And what you see happen is, bam, all my events, all my hosts come in. And if I start dragging over, uh, you know, we can drag over other things like severity. Uh, I have to find it here, event severity, event message, 
remember, this is our detail information, so event message. Maybe I want uh, event status. Put them over here at the end. Something like that. Maybe I want event class as well. Whatever, whatever information you would want in your detailed report. Put it here. Probably one event time. So, so time is in a different bucket of information. So, event date and time. I'm going to say uh, arrival date. We'll put him at the very beginning. And there we go. So, first thing I notice here is that under event severity, I see um, I've got OK events. I don't really want to see those. So that's going to require a filter so that I can kind of get rid of those. So let's let's drag over event severity into the filter area. Start cutting down on what we're seeing. Event severity. And I'm going to say, show me all the values available for event, event severity. And then only select the ones that I want. I'm going to omit the OKs. And when you do that, he's going to re-swizzle or refresh, and uh, all the OKs will be, will be dropped out. Now, uh, I can limit this any way I want with filters. I can have as many filters as I want. <clears throat> In this case, I'm not going to put any more filters other than to drag over things that are needed for a drill down report like event host, because this, this is what I'm going to link on in the next page. I'm not going to do anything with it. And again, this report is not a report that's going to be run on demand by someone. This is just going to be information uh, that the detail information from a, a graphical report that I'm going to put on the front end of this thing. Okay, so I'll put event host. I think I'll even, I can even put the, if I decide to put uh, something with severity, maybe I want to click and see just all the same severities. I'll put event severity over here as well. Uh, if I could, if I want to be cute, I can I can change the uh, or make this a little little prettier, right? I can change the event severity. I can do a a, a, a conditional format. Whoops, my mistake. Conditional format here, so that I can have some colors based upon. Uh, where to go? Event severity, and I'm not going to go through every one of these because that would take too much time. But but if I do a couple, so I can say if it's critical, make it red, and if it's info, make it blue, and I could continue and so on and so on, and get every color here. But you can see what happens here when I change this. Those two. I get the I get the different colors around info and, and critical. Okay, so this is going to be my detailed report. This is going to be the information I get to after I uh, build my front end report. So I'm just going to publish this. Right, so when I'm done with it, I'm going to publish it, and I'm going to call it uh, our demo. I've already did a webinar demo one. I'll call it webinar demo two, and I'll save it. So I didn't I didn't put any so if I were going to run it myself I could select which host I wanted and which severities and just run this thing. Uh, I didn't put any time filters. Typically, if you're building a report, you're going to want to put a time filter around it instead of looking at all the data. But I didn't really need to because again, this is going to be drill down data. Uh, I'm going to say create a, the front end report to this drill through. So what I want to do is create another report. device metrics and events, and this report is really very simple. Uh, I'm going to say event information, give me the event host, and give me event measures, number of events. Okay. 
Now, if I go over to charts and just drag my dimensions over to horizontal and vertical axis, it's going to figure out it's probably going to be best in a bar chart. But you can see that you know, I'm getting a lot of things here. I probably don't want to see all of these. I probably just want to see the top X number. So let me go back to data, and I can limit how many I see by taking this event measure again, or event count, and I'll just put it at the front, and I'll make this a an advanced function here, and do a an analysis and say, just give me the top top 10, and save that. So I'm, now I'm only getting the top 10 with event count, okay? So if I go back to my chart, I get just the top 10. Now I still haven't linked it, right? so now I've just got a, a chart information, uh, but it would be standalone until I do this little part here, which is this drill through on the analysis style. So this is going to allow me to drill through. And when I do that, it gives me a new tab at the top called Related Content. If I click on Related Content, I search for the, my, uh, the first report I created, which has my detailed data. And it was webinar demo two, this guy here. I drag it over to the drill through area. And then what is the master field that's going to link to the child field? And I'll just update that. And I'm going to publish. And this will be. Webinar demo to graph. If I save that, it's going to run. So he's run, and now these will, these will be hot, right? So I can select any one of these guys, and it'll drill into the detailed data just for that particular server, right? So these are all the events coming from that particular server. And then the detailed data that, that I wanted, right? And you can add as much detailed data as you want. You can go back, right? And you can click on, again, any one of these guys that you want. And you have all these kind of options as, as, if you want a separate page or you want a separate pop-up window, do you want it to appear to the right-hand side? There's all kind of options here open to you. Uh, just in the time we had, this is about as, as quick as I could build a report like this uh, and have it mean something for you. So real quick, the other two other asks that I had uh, were how, how do you broadcast, so how do you generate uh, this on a schedule? So if I wanted this to run on a schedule, I would say broadcast, create new, a new broadcast. So I, I picked my recipients on who I want this to go to, or I could enter email addresses here, and I can run it on what frequency, daily, weekly, monthly. Do I want it to be a HTML, a PDF, CSV, Word, Word document, Excel, and so on, right? What kind of format do I want this to be? And then I can create a schedule and it would run on that particular schedule and it would be notified however I, however I picked. I'm not going to do that. All right, uh, real quick, we're going to look at Something else that has been asked for, which is slightly different, which is a uh, a report on performance data. How do you do those? And I'm not going to build one. We don't have the time for that. I've got one pre-built. I'm going to just open it. So this is uh, CPU performance from my Windows servers for the last 24 hours, okay? So if I edit that report and look at the data, this is how I built it.
So again, drag over what you want. All I really needed was the device name and an hourly average, right? And you kind of make it a cross tab by dragging the hour down here. Now this is important. Uh, if you drag the, if you're using hourly, daily, or weekly, then your filter must also be hourly, daily, or weekly to match, okay? And since I said last 24 hours under my filter, my filters is set for last 24 hours, okay? So anytime you open this report, it's going to just look for the last 24 hours. I also created filters for the monitor instance and the monitor type, which is how I get Windows CPU, right? So if I look at the defined value, the instance is underscore total, and the monitor type is, is processor, okay? Other than that, as far as charts go, you just drag over the the fields to the right axis, and I did, you know, hour on the horizontal, average on the uh, on the vertical, and then for color, I drug over the device name so that each device has its own color, and you have your legend down here, okay? And again, there's all of all of the kind of things that you can do here <laughs> as far as making this look and feel a little bit different. If I didn't like the 3D line, right, I can change the chart type. With lots of different chart types over here I could go with. Uh, right, just a regular line looks like so. Area type chart, right? And when I'm done, again, I publish and save it. So let's see, we're coming up to, to the end. The last thing I want to show is a. Uh, the dashboard. So as I mentioned, I have a couple of different tabs on my dashboard. This is my event dashboard. And so in this case, I've got, you know, event status, open versus closed, uh, the uh, event count by severity, the top X, like we just built, uh, and also by severity. And then I have the number of incidents that have been generated from events, as well as the event to incident status, so are they assigned, canceled, all that kind of thing. If I wanted to add something new to this report, or to this dashboard, I edit, edit the dashboard, and I decide where I want to where I want to stick it. Okay, so uh, in this case, I'll just put it right below this guy. We can look for our new webinar report that we created. It was demo two, I think that we did. There we go. I can drag this over here. Easy as that, if I save it and activate the tab. So I've added that to my to my dashboard. And again, I could have two rows, three rows, all kind of stuff. And it should still be drillable, right? So if I go HQ2, it's drillable into the detailed information that we've set up previously. Okay, uh, I know we're coming, I want to leave at least a minute or two for any questions that may not have, have been answered. It looks like we have about two minutes remaining. Uh, are there any any questions outstanding, Seth, that I need to address? Well, let's go ahead and take a look. Um, I'm looking at which ones that, uh, so, um, so one question here from Mayank is, can the current the current SA, AP BO objects business objects can only collect connect to one TSIM? The smart reporting is it still one to one or can it be one to many? And Vikram, do I need to unmute so, you? So yeah, you can unmute Vikram as well. So if I understand the the, the question correctly, yes, you you can have multiple TSIMs connecting and sending information through their own report engine into the to the same data store. That that is true. Okay. Um, so uh Monty had asked back when you were showing the coloration of the events, mm -hmm. you know, like blue for info and red for critical. Um, can you do that level of coloring in the chart as well? Like you want to see the critical event count in red and the all info in blue. So if you have a visual representation, I guess, can you do a stacked bar, that kind of a thing? 
Yes, exactly. So, so, I, and you can see that I've, I've done that here on this this type of guy. So, w whenever you're creating the, uh, the the report or the graph, you tell it to use the conditional formatting that you've previously set up for the data, and it will it will take advantage of it. Okay. Um, let's see. Let me. Uh, do we have any filter to build a report at a customer level? At a customer level. Uh, I'm not sure I understand that question exactly, but. Uh, I, I can uh, answer that partly. Uh, if you have uh, multiple uh, Customers configured in the TSPS using multi-tenancy. So same multi-tenancy can be narrated to the smart reporting. So you can have separate uh, section for each customer or uh, the separate uh, client organization is created in the smart reporting for each tenant in the TSPS. Okay, great. Thank you, Vikram. Um, uh, Jamil asks, these, well, he says these dashboards look much better than the TSPS dashboards. Is there a plan to move these into TSPS? <laughs> I, wish, I wish I could answer that, but I, I don't have any idea. Okay. I, I can tell you that we are working on the user interface for all of our products, so we're hoping that the presentation server will, uh, will benefit from some of those improvements. Um, so uh, I had another question. Does the data come directly from the patrol agents uh, or do the patrol agents feed the database and then you get it from the database? So the, the, the patrol agents feed information through the report engine and the report engine then stuffs it into the database. Okay. If you, if you uh, remember the, the diagram here. So the, so the agents feed, feed the TSIM, sorry, agent information goes to the TSIM first, and, the, and then from there the, uh, the data is sent to the report engine. Okay, and does each, does each TSIM server require its own engine, or can you do a one-to-many server to engine? I think, I think each TSIM requires its own engine, but I'll let Vikram answer that for sure. Yes, that's right. So each TSIM requires its own uh, report engine. So one report engine can talk to uh, one TSIM. So if you have multiple TSIMs, you need same number of report engines, and all of those report engines can feed into one single reporting database, and then uh, the smart reporting can show all of that data in the smart reporting. Great. Thank you. Uh, Ricky, uh, you had asked, you said you were having audio problems. You were asking if it was 11.3, and will we be sending out? The answer is yes to both. 11.3 uh, is the minimum TrueSight presentation server. Um, infrastructure manager is minimum of 10.7, 10 10.7. 10 uh, we're showing you 11.3 right now, uh, and this, this is being recorded, and we will give you the presentation. Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> Yes, Mayank, we understand that setting up different reporting solutions for the different uh, TrueSight solutions is a pain, and we are we are we are hear that feedback loud and clear. Um, okay, let me see if we have. Uh, okay, with regard to performance data, can we use raw data instead of the hourly or aggregated data? Yes, but uh, as I explained, there there could be some performance degradation when you're. If you have a lot of those types of reports that are using raw data and, and not hourly. Okay. Um, I guess this answers the question. Um, you can't do that. You can't use this with proactive net 9.6, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, and Pablo asks, what's the delay to obtain events and impact information from TSIM into the reporting engine? I guess how often does the reporting engine update? So I'll let Vikram answer that uh, for events as, as well as performance data. Yes, so for events it is near real time. So same time when you see events in the TCM, the 
event will appear in the reporting as well. Reporting database will also have same time when event is stored in the TSIM database. Uh, but for performance data, there will be two hours latency. Uh, so when you get a data from petrol agent to TSIM server, after that, after two hours, that data is available in the reporting database. That is because the reporting engine is collecting data on hourly basis. Every hour it is collecting, once in hour it collects, and there is one hour latency additional. So in total, performance data is available in reporting database after two hours of latency. Great, thank you. Um, okay, so Laura asks, and I think I know the answer to this one, um, if, uh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to view this. It's, okay, uh, says that smart reporting supports um, only SQL Server or Oracle, and she wanted to know if uh, it will be supported that you can use MySQL or a non-licensed database, which is supported by Yellowfin generally, but we say we only support SQL Server or Oracle. So, so that's correct. Um, <clears throat> I'll, let, I'll let Vikram answer that. <laughs> okay. Yes, right. So currently we are supporting only two databases, Oracle and SQL Server, uh, Standard and Enterprise Edition is supported. Uh, Yellowfin supports a lot of other databases, but Report Engine, which is collecting data from TSIM database and inserting in the reporting database, this is supporting only Oracle and SQL Server, hence uh, only these two databases are supported for smart reporting. Okay. Um... I think that's that might be an issue for Laura, so may, we might have to talk talk to her uh, separately. She's asking about the smart reporting database. And okay, so if you are asking about smart reporting repository database, where yes. it stores all the uh, metadata like uh, smart reporting users, uh, reports created, and their permission. So yes, we support all those databases supported by Yellowfin, but uh, provided you need to procure the license required for the database. Okay, hopefully. Okay, it doesn't look like we are answering okay. Laura's question, but we might have to take that offline. Um, uh, there was a question about licensing. Vikram, can you describe the licensing for this compared to the licensing for business objects? Do we need this customer need to acquire new licenses? Do they migrate? How does that work? Uh, yes, right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Third. No, 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 that's fine, Vikram. Okay, so for business objects, license was provided by BMC. The business objects license was provided by BMC. For smart reporting, uh, this license need to be uh, purchased separately from BMC. Uh, so. In short, the business objects license was included in their TrueSight license, but smart reporting need to be bought separately. Yeah, but it's not, it's a nominal, nominal charge, right? It's yeah, yeah, yes, a... yes. I agree, yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm looking. Um, uh, for events, historical reporting, this is applicable for Intuity as well. Any events coming to TrueSight? Yes, A any events that come to TrueSight, yes, can be reported upon. Okay. Um, I, I'm not sure I understand this question, but I'll ask it. Maybe you guys get it. Uh, the database requirements for smart reporting, do we need to create the schema in the existing TSIM database instance, or should we have the separate instance, not the schema? It should be separate instance uh, in uh, for report engine or reporting database should be separate instance and not in the uh, TSIM database. Okay. Um, and Alessandra says, can we use an Oracle instance hosted by the customer database server, like on Exadata, 
and this is to be on the same server of Remedy start smart reporting. Yes, that is possible. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we're we're ten minutes over, um, and I I think I captured most of the questions. It's a little difficult to follow them on the chat and the Q and A. Um, if if we did not get to your question, um, please by all means reach out to me directly, and I'll make sure they get answered. You can do it via the community's event post and start a conversation there if you like, or you can email me. Uh, I want to thank everybody for coming. I'll remind you that uh, the community's event post for this. Uh, for this webinar, we'll have a link to, it will have Thad's presentation as well as the recording once I'm able to get it from uh, WebEx and get it converted. And that we'll be doing this again. We have a special session to end the year in two weeks. I mean, it's a surprise, but I'm going to be announcing that shortly and I'll send out the invitation to everybody. And then we'll go into our uh, U.S. and EMEA holiday season and we will come back to the other side and start again next year. So. Thank you, everybody, again, for participation and attendance. Um, and uh, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day or evening. And thank you, Vikram and Thad. All right. Thank you.